What's the dumbest thing you've done for a girl? Story 1. I met her at a party in her hometown, which was located 2.5 hours drive away from where I lived. At that time, I didn't have a car, so I convinced a co-worker to go and drive us in his car. I was a smoker. From the time I called the girl that day to ask her out, around 2 p.m., I stopped smoking because she didn't like cigarettes. My co-worker was also a smoker. I asked him not to smoke inside his car so I wouldn't smell like cigarettes. He wasn't happy with this request but did what I asked. My co-worker and I finally made it to the party to find that the organizers only accepted cash. We didn't have enough cash for the tickets. The girl didn't bother coming outside to help us out. So it's around 10 p.m. and we're trying to find an ATM to get more cash. Please note, we were in a small town in a developing country. We asked around and learned there were two ATMs around the area. Inside a petrol station. Inside a shopping center. We drove to the petrol station and the ATM was not working. We drove to the shopping center, which is supposed to close at 10 p.m. We got there at around 10.15 and saw some people leaving the place. We tried to go inside to use the ATM, but the security guard didn't allow us inside because it was past 10 p.m. 20 minutes later, I managed to convince him to speak to his manager, who was at his place enjoying his Saturday night. His manager answered the phone and after expressing his frustration, he did authorize us to use the ATM. The security guard escorted us to the ATM. We got the cash. Victory! We went back to the party, and we were finally able to get in. I called the girl a few times, and she didn't pick up my calls. A few moments later, I managed to find her, with another person and holding a lit cigarette. Story 2. Long story, but it details the nerve-wracking experience of visiting my girlfriend's house for the first time. This was in the pre-cell phone era, so after I left my house, I had zero communication with her. In high school, I quietly left my house through a window, got into my car, put the key in the shift lock release, and pushed my car in neutral to move it away from the house without making noise before starting it. I didn't realize the steering wheel would still be locked, and the car almost got away from me, heading straight into the side of our neighbor's parked car. I caught up to it, jumped into the driver's seat, and pressed the brake with both feet. The brake screeched loudly, so I was sure I was caught. I turned on the engine and drove away, feeling I would be in big trouble and never allowed home again. My girlfriend's house was a half hour away, and her father was a large man who ran side businesses out of his enormous garage and kept odd hours. He was not someone to mess with, and I knew he would be very angry if he caught me on his property uninvited. Their neighborhood was gated with only one entrance, but there was a culvert next to their house that connected with another neighborhood and could be crossed on foot in the dark. I drove an extra 10 minutes to park my car at the dead end of that culvert in the next neighborhood over. The last thing I wanted was to be trying to escape in my car, only to find him blocking my only way out. As I parked, I was absolutely sure someone in a nearby house was going to call the police to investigate this strange car at the end of their street that arrived after midnight. I walked through the culvert with only the moonlight shining through the trees to guide me. Eucalyptus bark and leaves crunched under my every step, but soon I was through. I entered her property through the main driveway, and I could see her father had the lights on in the office at the end of his massive garage. Knowing he was awake was scary, but I took solace in knowing his whereabouts. I knocked on her window and awkwardly climbed through once she opened it. We hung out for a while on her bed, but then she thought she heard her father coming to check on her. She said he'd sometimes come to her door, which she wasn't allowed to close, and just stand there looking at her. She pushed me off the bed and told me to hide in her walk-in closet. I did, and literally threw a pile of her dirty laundry over myself. I lay there in hiding for what felt like an eternity. Finally, she got me and told me I needed to make a break for it. I slipped out her window as gracefully as I could, and then made my way back to my car. Once I was off the property and walking through the culvert, I started to feel better, but then I heard a dog barking and was pretty sure someone was looking for me. Luckily, I made it to my car without incident, and it hadn't even been towed yet. The rest of the drive home went smoothly, and I was even able to sneak back into my house without being caught. As nerve-wracking as this experience was, the worst part is that once I'd gotten away with it, I voluntarily repeated it. Story 3. Junior year of high school. We were talking on the phone, and I knew she hadn't been feeling well. She always seemed a little embarrassed at how uncomfortable she got when it came that time of the month. So it's probably 10 p.m. on a school night. This was back when that was a big deal. She was clearly miserable. And she let it slip that all she wanted to do was get back to town the next day, so she could have a chocolate milkshake. She was craving chocolate. Well, nothing else to do. Dairy Queen is closed, so if she's gonna have a milkshake tonight, I'm gonna have to make it myself. After a couple questions for my dad, he always makes the best homemade shakes, and mastering our ancient blender, I had one ready to go, nestled in a cooler of ice cubes and some frozen peas and corn to keep it from tipping over. Now she lives outside of town. Like, way out. We're talking rural area. So it's a minimum hour and a half round trip. And I know that since it's a school night, if I let her know that I'm driving out, she'll try to stop me. Her parents certainly would. So it's gotta be a surprise, and it's gotta be fast, because if her parents are asleep when I come up the driveway, it's a roll of the dice whether I get in trouble or not. 
This is long before the era of cell phones. But I make the drive. I show up at her door. Her parents are confused, but no one gets upset. I present her with the object of her desire, a chocolate milkshake. I think she was kinda giggling and kinda emotional. Probably hormones or something. Since her parents were very awake and very curious, I don't even think we got a good night hawk. But I know for that one moment on that one night, I made a human woman happy. So that was 1998. We've been together ever since. Story 4. I joined an event called Beer Olympics to be with a girl who I was very much interested in. Since I was an introvert, a party was the last place I wanted to be in, but I went there for her. I would have done anything for her. There was an arm wrestling competition in this event. I never thought I was strong, but I didn't think my opponent would injure my arm. The skin didn't tear, but the upper arm bone had pretty much been torn slash twisted off. I had to pick up my arm and hold it in a way that didn't look like it had been torn off because everyone was freaking out, especially the girl. She was in shock for a while, on her knees, unblinking, until she came to and began helping me. With her holding and consoling me, I could feel no pain. The adrenaline also helped. When I was put in the ambulance and she could no longer be beside me, the pain finally broke through and it was the second worst pain in my life, second only to the pain I felt when she said she wasn't interested in me. My right arm was useless for about six months. My scar from two surgeries still looks fresh today. Every time I see it, I'm reminded of how stupidly obsessed I was with her. I suppose, at the least, I can thank her for my being ambidextrous now. Story 5 I spent $80 worth of flowers just to get this girl to see my worth as a potential partner because I thought I really liked her. Turns out I was blindsided and it was just infatuation. The more time I spent with this girl, the more I realized how she lacked structure, suffered from her insecurities and cared more about K-pop bands than living in the moment and getting to know each other. She constantly complained about how people not taking time to get to know her. Then lo, and behold I show up. I developed a friendship over a year and realized things weren't going to materialize, especially after I confessed my feelings for her. I poured my heart and soul out to this girl. She grew up sheltered. So looking back at the pointless conversations and her naivety, she still had a lot of growing up and maturing to do. I'll hit up her every once in a blue moon. Things haven't changed much and this all happened two years ago. I guess at the end of the day, I dodged a bullet. We weren't compatible anywhere. 23 years old and she has the maturity of a teenager still, always complaining but never taking action to better herself or her situation. That's the last time I buy flowers or do anything special for anyone. All for the sake of companionship. Can't lie, I've grown and matured a lot over the years since then. I started counseling. She's a woman in her 40s and our conversations are so in death and intriguing. It's nice to talk and converse with someone who understands you mentally and emotionally for once. Story 6. Girlfriend from high school I was still dating my freshman year of college. She was back in my hometown that weekend and it was I hadn't seen her in a while plus I kinda wanted to be intimate. I decided to go home and it's 2.40 minutes drive. 1.30 and I realized there's a hurricane coming in close to my hometown. No big highways so the back roads were getting messed up. Had to turn around because a tree fell on the road, then drove through two feet of water to get through lots places. I also was running extremely low on gas and every gas station I tried had none but I managed to make it home nearly three hours later. I didn't even get to see her that weekend. It gets worse. When I had to leave I tried using my mom's gas that had been floating in the storage in our yard. It flooded. And my dumb self tried using it and my car made it a mile down the road before stalling out. This whole trip would have been avoided if I wasn't so set on being intimate and would have turned around like I should have. Fun to look back at now though. Story 7. Not for a person I liked or anything more like I felt bad. A friend of mine bought a car for her baby daddy while they were together. He was jobless and abusive. She wanted the car back from him but didn't want to steal it. She didn't have the title yet it was a Craigslist car. So it ends up getting towed and I agree to help get it. It's 12 a.m. because she asked for my help last minute. The lot is 40 minutes away from us and once we get there it's $100 more than what she thought it was. Granted she has the money but it's all the money she has and we get the car it. Unfortunately it has a flat and has no gas so it isn't even drivable. Fortunately she has a gas canister in the back of the baby daddy's car. We get that go to the gas station to get gas. She is broke so I pay for the gas. The canister has a puncture in it and begins leaking not a lot but enough to lose about a quarter over time. The gas gets all over my pants and shoes making me stink. We fill up what we have, and we take it to the gas station to fill the tire as best as we can. Tire filled up, but the gas we put in isn't enough to get us back to our area. So I pay for more gas to fill it up. We finally make it back, and she thanks me. Just glad to help out. About a week later I find out she just ends up giving the car back to her baby daddy. So kinda lot of trouble for nothing. I wouldn't say it was dumb but pointless. Story 8. I had this huge crush on a girl on my freshman year in college. One day, I'm talking to her, and she admits she's kinda nervous about the next day's presentation since she won't have anyone she knows there, and she's scared she's going to mess things up. Important details about college where I live. Our entire year is divided into smaller classes to facilitate classes in smaller rooms and presentations. 
We have four classes. Even classes have classes together and odd classes work the same. Campus colleges are pretty rare. So you either go to college close to your home or rent a room near your new college. We're in different presentation days. So I had already done that presentation. And with that, I was excused from presentation days after my group presented. On top of that, this is a one class only day, meaning most people are going there to present and then go home. Most same people that were excused would stay at home. But I say, screw it, I'm going. I'm in sort of a weird spot as I live an hour away from my college, public transportation time, straight line would be quicker. So it's not worth it for me to move, but I take a long time to get to classes. Keep in mind this class is early, like 9 a.m. early. So I have to wake up really early on a day I was planning on sleeping in just so I can be there for this girl. But I make it to class. The odds, one since that's ours, I was in class three and she was in class one. And then I wait. I pay half attention to the other groups presenting first and notice my crush was running late. 45 minutes in I text her, hey, you okay? I thought you were presenting today but you're not here. Did something happen? 15 minutes later she replies, oh, I didn't tell you? The teachers asked me to present on the evens class to have a lower density of presentations on the odds one. I was grumpy all day. I ended up confessing and getting rejected later that year. She started dating one of my college friends closer to the end of the second semester and it was really tough at the time, but I then learned she's somewhat very homophobic, as in, she says gay people are only gay because of trauma, is very hellbent on her beliefs across the board and gets upset if the conversation the group is having challenges them in any way. So, looking back, I guess I dodged a bullet. But that day was still unpleasant. Story 9. My birthday is in January and I wanted to visit my brother whose birthday is the day after mine. He lives in LA, so what better way to leave a cold Michigan winter on your birthday? I stayed for a week and met a girl on the very last day of my trip. She was super hot but totally out of my league. We kept making eye contact but I didn't want to get involved with a girl especially when I'm flying back tomorrow. I kept looking at her though. I watched as she slammed a shot and said, forget it, then walked over to me and introduced herself. It never happens like that, does it? The super hot girl who you've been eyeing at the bar wants to meet you. Long story shorter, she was bummed I lived in Detroit but I promised to get coffee with her before I left per her request. I started to really like her and I said I'll be back. When I got back she begged me to get a flight back, and I did. In February, we texted and FaceTimed for a month before my trip back. We had a romantic time the first three days, she hosted the Super Bowl party and invited my brother and a few friends I knew that moved out there. Everyone liked her. She was an Instagram model and dated celebrities before me. I could tell by the fourth day she was acting different, every day it got worse, and I could tell she wasn't as into it. Long story short, it didn't work out and I was pretty heartbroken. I paid for everything out there and helped her move into a new apartment. Spent above my means on restaurant bills. So yeah, my first great white buffalo, sorry, really. Story 10. She called me in distress, crying and intoxicated, throughout the night starting at 1 a.m. She said she had a disagreement with her sister, which later turned physical. There were three or four phone calls of varying lengths. Despite the late hour, the distance, and the cold weather, I offered to pick her up each time. Eventually, her sister kicked her out, and she was supposed to get a ride from her sister's friend, even though I had offered to pick her up multiple times over the last three hours. It was around 4 a.m. by this point. She sounded extremely upset, so I asked if she wanted me to meet her at her mom's place where she was being dropped off, and she said yes. I got in my car and drove there, despite the freezing weather, to show her how much I cared. When I arrived at her mom's apartment complex, she was nowhere to be found and didn't answer her phone. I waited around for 15 minutes, but she was nowhere to be seen. The next day, I was upset, so I gave her some attitude when she called. She claimed to remember very little about the previous night, didn't apologize, and even blamed me for driving out there, knowing she was drunk and just going to pass out inside. Story 11. I met a girl on Instagram who was my girlfriend from 2014 to 2019. Here's a brief summary of some of the significant moments during our five-year relationship. I left all my friends after my freshman year of high school to switch to cyber school. The plan was for me to make more money to be able to visit her. I missed out on countless hangouts and activities with my friends and lost out on some of my best years with them. I spent several thousands of dollars on her after saving for months at a minimum wage job at Chili's. I frequently sent her money via PayPal because she often needed rent money, money to feed her cats, or wanted to buy weed. It was only $15 here and there, but it added up over our five-year relationship. I spent even more money to visit her for weeks at a time. She lived in Canada and wasn't well off, so I would pay for the plane ticket, food, and dates. I didn't realize I was in a toxic, mentally abusive relationship. I was constantly insulted and screamed at. The song 25 to Life by Eminem became my anthem after we broke up. I didn't realize that she was severely mentally unstable. Getting a phone call from her or her friends saying she was going to harm herself was a weekly event. She was repeatedly put into mental wards due to self-harm. The mental toll it took was extraordinary, and to this day, I still can't receive a phone call without my heart rate noticeably increasing and getting goosebumps. 
I continued to tolerate her serious drug problem. She did almost every drug imaginable, and I spent countless nights begging her not to do them. This went on for about three years of our five-year relationship before she became clean. However, at that point, the mental damage had been done and was unfixable. There is much more that I could go on about. The final straw was when her mom called me and told me she thought my ex had been cheating on me. I broke up with her shortly after, but like an idiot, I let her back into my life. She ghosted me about six months later, claiming her life was threatened by a crazy ex of hers or something. I consider getting back with her the dumbest thing I have ever done. This all took place over about five years. We've been apart for about a year at this point, and it feels indescribable. I was extremely young throughout our relationship. I was 14 when we started talking while she was 16, and dealing with that level of emotional stress at such a young age was overwhelming. I am now 21, and I feel like a whole new person.